All right, welcome back guys. Um, in today's session we're gonna do the landing gear. So we're gonna prepare, as you can see here, we're gonna prepare all the pieces for painting. I'm not gonna do anything with the wheels because I decided to use aftermarket wheels. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, the True Detail new set that is coming out. So I'm gonna do everything as far as building the landing gear, cleaning the pieces, also the landing gear doors, make sure that everything is ready so we can paint it. And then with the, the wheels I can add on later. Let's start with the main, with the nose landing gear. Maybe before you start all this, uh, the landing gear, uh, as you well know, landing gear usually, and especially in this kit, consists out of several small parts that you have to prepare and put away. So it might be a smart idea to have a couple containers here, like uh, we got a little uh, fast food containers for ketchup. So by the next trip to the fast food restaurant and you have to fill up on ketchup, maybe grab a couple extra. They always work. Also, they're very great if you have to mix paint or something. They're disposable. Keep them close. They're, they're really handy. Cleaning up landing gear. It's always one of the few jobs or tasks I, I dread because of the seam line. Now, in this case, there is a seam line, but it's very, very minimal. So it's not going to take a lot to clean that up. As a matter of fact, um, it's not going to be in any effort at all to clean that up. There always will be a seam line no matter what because of the way that the mold, the ejection mold is constructed. But with the quality of Tamiya, there is hardly any cleanup necessary. Just a couple scrapes maybe and, and some sanding with very, very fine sanding uh, paper. Like for instance, uh, this is uh, 3200 grit. That will be more than sufficient. You can also have the multi-purpose pad here that will take a lot of the fibers off. But other than that, it's going to be very easy to clean this up. And again, that makes it more interesting too, because if you have to really go into the, all these crevices and creases and you have to get the, the seam line out, after a while it gets a little discouraging actually, but in this case, not at all. One thing to point out, once you're dealing with very delicate parts and intricate parts like the landing gear, especially in this case, it is all a lot of very intricate attachment to the sprue. It's very handy to have a premium sprue nipper close where you can reach into tight spots and make a very, very clean snip without distorting the part. For normal purposes uh, yeah you get the, the regular sprue nipper out there but for for really this kind of work um, you should really consider uh, getting one of these very ergonomic and very they got a very small I call it a beak in a way uh, where you can get into the small places or crevices without breaking the part and make a clean cut Again, in gluing these intricate parts, don't use too much plastic weld. Just a little bit is enough. It's also good to point out while doing this, it all has to be glued together and painted. But don't forget to put the small decals on there because there are a couple of stencils that need to be on the on the landing gear. Try not to overlook that. Try to make it maybe make a note or something because once you pass this stage of like step 22 in this case, you move on and Tamiya indicates that you have to put like a little tiny decal here in on both sides of the front landing gear. You might forget that. Make a note or a mental note if you're capable of doing that, that you have to come back after you paint it, that you have to come back and look at this step to see what kind of a decal or what kind of stencil needs to be put in place. Now, if you forget, I don't think it's a big deal, but for all the, uh, my fellow nitpickers out there, it, it's very important to remember this. So again, once you're done, it's painted, make sure you know to come back and see what kind of decal needs to be put in place. Also, as, as you can see here in uh, step 22, there is uh, clear parts for the landing light. This is another thing. It's not very smart to glue these on right now because you have to airbrush or paint everything and they might only obstruct what you're doing. Clean this part up and put it in a little cup or a little container to be glued on later. But for now, ignore that. A general rule is 
Don't glue any clear parts if you have to spray paint or airbrush or whatever you call it. Keep that aside and only attach it once the, the painting is done. I just have to glue on a couple more things and then we'll move on to the uh, main landing gear. Even with these screw nippers, this is a very, very, very delicate part as you can see. Very flimsy, very thin. And still, there is a reasonable amount of residue left from where it was attached to the sprue. So if you do it, if you try to cut it like this, you might break it. Or once you get like one of these sprue nippers, it really will slice most of it off, almost clean. And then it's very easy to go after it with a scalpel and without any problem, you can clean it off. And there you have it. This is the major component of the nose gear. I'm not gonna go with the, with the wheels that come with the kit. I opted to use some resin alternates. There is nothing wrong with the wheels of Tamiya. You can easily put those on. I'm gonna do a review soon for uh, two detail wheels and I'm gonna install those. This is just personal preference what I'm gonna do. But for now, after cleaning it up and putting all the little intricate parts in place, it really looks the part. So I'm gonna put this, as I mentioned, uh, maybe out of the way and in a safe place in a little container until it's ready to get painted. What we're gonna do now is go with the main landing gear and uh, assemble that, clean it up. Yeah. We have to do a right and a left, make sure we don't mix it, mix them up. This is also a smart thing to do and I learned that by trial and error is usually I get into it and then I cut all these components loose uh, left and right and I think I have it all figured out and I can remember it and then five minutes later I don't know what's left and right and then I have to go back and, and try to match everything back to the sprue and, and see what number uh, it is. So. I learned my lesson, so I'm going to go step by step. Also, Tamiya pointed out in step 25 and step 26, they do the right side separate and the left side separate. So there is no room for, for making a mistake. We're going to start with the right landing gear and remove all the parts that are necessary to do the right landing gear. As I mentioned in previous chapters about cleaning up parts and uh, parts that fuse together that, have, that actually cannot have a, a seam or anything. It's very important that once you cut them loose from the sprue and there is some residue, that you clean it up very, very gently. You don't want to, you don't want the chance to, of really cutting into the into the edge here where it's going to be a lot harder to repair. Take your time. Make sure that you don't compromise the edges of or the ridges that you don't cut into the plastic and only remove the piece or the the, the leftover residue that needs to be removed. There is a lot of good reference material out there, like available on the internet, and you can Google anything related to the F-14. There is a lot of publications out there. Squadron has their own Squadron Signal book. Very good book, very good reference to have. But there is also a book, the F-14, by Daco Products, Danny Cormans. That's a book you should really also get in your, in your library. It really will show you any and every facet that you need to in the build. Also, the detail shots are fantastic. It's all in color. The time of where we're making this video, uh, the book was sold out, but I contacted Danny, and probably by the time this video is published, it's back in stock. So you might think in considering, if you don't have one already, of picking one up. We will carry it or we have it in our inventory, so you might check our website. A very good reference material. It's one of the major publications out there that will really help you. During this build, you have to have one on your workbench. If you don't have one already, to check our website first and see if we have it in stock. If not, then you have to try to find it somewhere else. But it's really, really necessary that you pick one of those books up. Okay, let's concentrate back on the landing gear. Now these landing gears, the main landing gear are, other than the uh, nose landing gear, these 
main landing gear struts are of are made out of several components so there might be a little bit more work in cleaning these up try to work as clean as you and as accurate as you can so you eliminate the seam line to a minimum but you will have because you have to glue several halves together you will have some seam lines here my suggestion is to really glue them very together very tight and then put a little tiny bead of plastic weld over the seam line and let it dry or you can use super glue but I think this is a, a lot safer way to do this you just have to wait a little longer until it's dry while with super glue you can almost work or sand immediately but since those pieces are so intricate and all that if you would spill super glue you might regret that decision so I would suggest just run a little tiny bead over the, the seam line and just uh, let it dry in the meantime you can clean up the other components there are several several small parts that will take some time and by the time they're all cleaned up i think you're ready to sand and put everything together there's a lot of components on the main landing gear it might be wise to leave some of the major ones off for instance this one here i would not glue that on until after you painted everything because remember landing gear 90 percent they're white they're airbrushed white and you have to weather them a little if you put too much components together and you get this intricate assembly it might be very hard to go in between uh, try to weather it try to brush it out uh, if you have too many fragile parts in place so i would suggest to clean everything up airbrush everything separate weather it and then put it together and then you can do some final touches to it but for now the main thing is to make sure you have a clean part to work on again don't rush it take your time the more time you spend on cleaning up the landing gear in a very meticulous way the less work you will have in, in sanding keep that in mind Cleaning this, all the little parts of the landing gear, I expected a lot more, more problem and I was actually anticipating some anxiety by doing this, but it goes pretty well. Uh, actually when you just scrape and, or uh, uh, scrape the seam off, uh, it's almost, you don't even have to touch it with sandpaper. All you need is a sharp uh, X-Acto knife or a sharp scalpel and the multi-purpose pad and all the seams are gone. You don't even have to touch it with a sanding stick or sandpaper. What I'm going to do as you can see the scissors here of uh, the landing gear I'm just gonna match them up at the tip and put some glue on there but I'm not gonna actually glue them in place because if I do that that will compromise the space I have to clean the main landing gear shaft itself I'm just gonna leave that part off until the glue that I put on the seam is dried and then I can eventually come back and put it in place but now I can easily remove this and eventually put back in place once I'm ready to do that but in the meantime I have to wait until the glue completely dries and hardens out so I can start eliminating those seam lines there are still some more parts to clean up so I will do that it also might be a smart thing to mark the cup I'm gonna keep the two landing gears separate in two separate containers so I'll, I'll just put the, the letter R on this one and then I have one for the left side uh, just to make sure I got everything in order and don't make any mistakes because a lot of the little pieces they're just mirror image and it's easy to mix them up not that you can actually glue them in place uh, eventually when you match them up and you try to test fit it, it some of them they will not be aligned so but it's just to uh, avoid aggravation 
and to avoid, avoid confusion it's better to have two cups with, uh, with left and right separated especially when you keep the, all the parts separate for painting purposes Now this is it for as far as the, the main landing gear. So I'm going to repeat everything that you just saw. I'm going to do it for the left side. In the meantime, you can do it also uh, if you want to follow this video with me. Uh, there is uh, a time in between you can do the, the left side. But for now I'm going to concentrate more on the wheel doors. I'm going to get those, I'm going to remove those from the sprues and also prepare them for painting. I'm also going to keep them left and right in different containers. Once the whole airplane is built, the whole model is built and you're ready for airbrushing, it's always nice to know that all those uh, little parts are already cleaned up and removed. So let's do that. Let's start with the, the front wheel well and then work our way all the way to the back end and do the main landing gears. As we did with the main landing gear, I'm also going to do this with the wheel well doors. I'm going to have a left and a right because again, they look a lot alike and uh, to avoid confusion, we just mark them left and right. Seems to be a little tricky here. There we go. Again, run a soft beat along the lines. There you go. Now we're going to do the right side. Same thing. One more little part on this one, on this side. There you go, put it in the right bucket. Now we can turn a page over and look at the wheel doors of the main landing gear. Do the same for the left side. Cleaning up these parts, as I mentioned before, is so it's a breeze.
inside the wheel well doors or a couple of them you will see ejection pin marks uh, not particularly these here but there are some very faint ones make sure you remove those doesn't really take a lot of effort but they're there and they might they might pop out while painting I don't know how visible they are but uh, it, it's just a little bit effort to to, uh, to remove those just to avoid any complications So well, this is apparently the last piece of the wheel doors and what I dreaded the most when actually the best can there's not much cleaning up to do. It's all nice and clean and crisp. Cleaning up the landing gear and the wheel doors and all and such and it seems like a lot of work and sometimes it is but in this case it was not all that bad and that and, and together in the ordinance you know we still have to go and make a selection what kind of ordinance we're gonna hang underneath. Um, uh, the F14, but that's a later problem. Once those are little things are done and cleaned up, then the work really will progress. Guys, this is it for now. The next time, I promise, we'll do the uh, the cockpit and clean and paint. If you like what we have to say and you want to see more of this, please subscribe to Squadron TV or make your friends subscribe, or even your puppy. You can also follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. <laughs>